and welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Today I'm focusing on eclectic art environments, the second in a series of features on this topic. And I'm taking you to three spaces around the world. The two are in Riverside, the first that we see here, which is Tio's Tacos. And then the second will be Juan Pueyo, which is an interesting restaurant chain, and I'll be showing you the Route 66 version of the restaurant. And the third is Harpar Villa, which is in Singapore. So in this feature, I wanted to focus on spaces that I thought defied the everyday normal expectations that we have of themed and immersive spaces. You can see here in this first example at Tio's Tacos that this is quite out of the ordinary. I mean, there are many themed restaurants around the world, but the fact that they've created this uh, intricate and exciting and creative and avant-garde approach to theming and immersion I think is quite extraordinary. And I'll talk about later about some common features of spaces like these, but as you can see and you'll see in the other two spaces, the first key thing that we might identify is the fact that there is such an eclectic approach to the theming. They're using art in very innovative ways, they're reusing materials, and they're creating sculptures and art pieces that defy our typical expectations of, we might, of what we might see in a theme space like this one, which happens to be a Mexican restaurant. And I think overall in showing you these spaces, I would like to suggest that they are some of the most inspirational spaces in the world. And the reason for this is they are totally outside the box. There's nothing about them, I think, that is within your typical consciousness, your expectation of what you might see in a themed or immersive space. And now we come upon the second of the uh, spaces I'll be focusing on today. And specifically, this is the Juan Pueyo restaurant in Riverside, California. And what is interesting about Juan Pueyo, at least in two of their locations, is how they've approached theming and uh, the design of space that replicates what you might expect in a museum. Be sure to check out the other video features on this restaurant chain, in particular their corporate headquarters, which is uh, themed around, strangely enough, McDonald's. So I think in this case, why I chose this restaurant to include is one, if you look at this museum, this uh, homage to Route 66, the approach here is quite different, and I think it defies what I might think of when I think of a museum. In a sense, the idea of folk art, art that I'm talking about in these features is applied to the cataloging, the design, the display of the devices here. It has that touch, not of a professional museum, but I would say a folk museum. And in that sense, I find it quite interesting and exciting. And secondly, I don't typically think that if I go into a restaurant, there will be an adjoining museum. Now certainly, you can also think about my trip to Café Sibela in uh, Berlin, which also has some of these museal features. So certainly quite interesting as we end here on this strange giant chicken just at the back of the museum. And now we get to the very interesting and perhaps the most over-the-top space of the three here, and this is Harpa Villa in Singapore. And this was specifically a, a space that when I visited Singapore, uh, I had at the top of my list. Very, very, very famous. Opened in 1937 by two brothers, and, and thus we get the name Har Pa, uh, which is uh, named after the two brothers. Uh, the space went over massive amounts of renovation over the years, and I will detail more of this to you in additional video features that specifically focus on this amazing, what some call a surreal, mythological theme park. And I think in this case, I've chosen this particular site uh, because of the approach to the design and the fact that so much is focused on mythology, and I don't show you in this video, but there's an emphasis on very dark aspects of uh, human behavior and uh, norms and, and values and so forth. And if you have a chance to walk through the park, you just, you just find some of the displays to be absolutely surreal and avant-garde in nature. And even here, as you can see, this is the entrance area just as you um, enter. And to me, it has that feel of a uh, grotto that you might see uh, in other uh, spaces like this that have exciting approaches to design. And uh, to that extent, I wanted to share with you this uh, wonderful uh, Toshin book, actually, 
this giant coffee table book called Fantasy Worlds, and you can see they actually do feature Harpa Villa in it uh, and many other spaces. And what is uh, interesting about this book is they're trying to focus on these sorts of spaces that have at their heart some degree of eclecticism, you know, a sense of creativity, uh, you know, all the words that come to mind, not just bricolage, but folk art, and this uh, idea of the unbridled spirit of the artist. And uh, the spaces that they feature uh, exist all over the world, some of them in the U.S., and some of them, of course, are um, in Asia, as we saw here, and uh, parts of Europe, and so forth. And I think what is so exciting to me about these types of spaces is they are beyond our definition of typical. Uh, they approach art, they approach design, they approach space, they approach the narrative of that space in ways that we are just not typically accustomed to. And as a way of uh, summarizing some of these features, let me just offer this uh, brief list of four reasons why I think uh, these spaces are so unique and why we should study them and appreciate them and learn from them in terms of creating our own exciting themed immersive spaces. Oh, first is the sense of unbridled creativity that I offered. I think we really see that in the Sanchez creation at Tio's Tacos. As well, we see too in aesthetics of reuse or bricolage. The sense of the sublime in the avant-garde, I think we see uh, both in Juan Pueo, the Route 66 Museum, and also in Harpal Villa. And in all of these cases, I would say lastly, we experience what could be called atypical immersion. We're not experiencing the same tired approach to branding, approach to theming that we see in so many spaces around the world. So thoroughly, all in all, amazing spaces that are worthy of our visit and appreciation. I hope you've enjoyed this video feature today here in Riverside, California at Tio's Tacos. Please come back for additional video features of the Immersive Worlds Handbook.